This is an incredible time, and we are at the precipice of big change. People are taking in the streets all over the world, taking direct action. In the midst of all this, I make toilets in villages in Uttar Pradesh, India. Maybe unrelated, but I want to use the toilet today as a model for change and collaboration. It's a work in progress. I want to tell you a story about facing the self, service, and making toilets. My 20s were mostly spent living comfortably in New York City at a computer, researching and writing. I was a part of a project to reform the IMF. I co-authored books on US foreign policy that I hoped would make someone like Noam Chomsky proud. I petitioned and protested. I had everything in place to be a proper adult. I had a procreating partner. I just had to finish my PhD and start living that life. But I couldn't ignore this feeling that the world needs more doing and less talking and clicking computers. I wasn't taking risks. I wasn't following my heart. Around this time, I made a new friend, a comedian. He had an Ivy League law, de law degree, but gave up that secure career for his passion, comedy, a very uncertain path. He died in the fall of 2010 in New Brunswick, New Jersey, exactly the same place and time when and where I started my PhD. The coincidence felt too profound to ignore. If I was honest with myself, I felt I was a cog. And I felt there was a sign I was ignoring, and I couldn't ignore it anymore. I think when I'm faced with my own death, I won't remember the times I was warm and comfortable in a fancy place. I will remember the times I felt loved and appreciated, challenged, in service, solidarity, a part of something bigger than the self, truly grateful for life, alive. So I packed up everything I had, left everything I had known, moved here, and started working in villages in Uttar Pradesh. Being here in India has been an incredible learning experience that always made me want to be here more. India does not need me. I need India. This has been one of the most exciting and rewarding experiences of my life. No book, no degree, nothing comes close to the fulfillment I feel through doing, through this service. This exhilarating journey taught me the far greater joy I feel supporting another human being at the most basic and fundamental level. Joy for me is on the ground, in the soil, in a team. My experience has been as hard as it has been amazing. I made this rake, which was a total failure. It was too heavy, and I should have learned from locally available tools. Lesson learned. So was this fundraising event that took a lot of time and effort, raised 30 US dollars, and was mostly only attended by the performers. Yet another learning lesson, although more embarrassing. There was one day everything went wrong. It started with me alone at 8 AM, unloading a full mini truck, including 50 kg bags of cement, while a group of men looked and didn't help. I knew just enough Hindi to know that they were talking about me and my Shakti. I had no food that day. In the afternoon, thorns punctured my leg. A man trying to help me remove them accidentally pushed them further in. I bled, it hurt a little, and everyone laughed, and I wasn't ready to laugh yet because I was hungry. Then I learned that work that was supposed to have started six weeks ago hadn't begun. I didn't have enough Hindi to explain myself, so I walked away, crying and hiding my tears, to get someone who could help me communicate. I was naive, and I needed to realize the importance of communication and improvisation. I had a breakthrough that day that stayed with me. It's because of these moments that I eventually really started to understand how to work within a team. Of the many things toilets have taught me, maybe the most important is what is possible in a team. Collaboration is a necessary part of producing anything. It is messy and hard. It requires practice, patience, flexibility, and empathy. Not everyone is on your team, and negotiating with those who aren't is a skill I'm still developing. But the team is everything, and you only go as far as your team. This is one story of a challenging collaboration I had. A professional video team came from a big city to film our project for free. We had a series of miscommunication, the same conflict in different forms. When the root problem was not addressed, small conflicts built until they became a big conflict. One of my closest friends taught me, what angers us in the other is what we ourselves do. The ego uses the other as a mirror of the self. Any conflict, I'm asking myself, how do I do the same thing? What's my role in this? I realized that in this conflict, I wasn't being compassionate. These people had traveled far, and they were gifting their service and time. 
Pointing fingers didn't solve the problem, but collectively coming up with solutions did. Effectively, effectively collaborating with people across cultures teaches me that human nature is universal. Of course, there are cultural dimensions to human behavior to know and respect. Collaborating has tested my beliefs. One, I believe most human conflicts are caused by how we communicate, not what we say. How someone achieves their goal, not the goal itself. Second, our only power as individuals is what we do and what we accept from the other. And lastly, showing is better than telling. I'm far from having the perfect recipe for collaboration. I hope by sharing the lessons I'm learning and applying in these exchanges, I'm showing you how it is hard but worthwhile. Some collaborations are easy and some require patience and love. The harder collaborations taught me more. Collaboration is a big part of explaining the how of this work. We try our best to have a collaborative, non-hierarchical work site. The only bosses are the experts who guide us. On site, we are all workers. No Malik mystery labor divide. Everyone does everything. This is one of the things I feel most proud of. Not what we made, but how we made these things. Everything we have made involved a series of inputs, be it on the engineering or science, the design, the market, product availability, everything. I was just the point of connection. The RGMDP organization has been a home for me in UP these years. It was they who introduced me to the village where we first started this work. I worked full time on these projects with one other person, Pawan. Together in the last year, we raised, through crowdfunding, 76 donations. We uploaded all of the project bills online. We publicly document how every rupee was spent. With the money raised, we worked in four new villages, making more toilets and solar powering homes. Our toilets illustrate at least two points, how we carry out this work generally and the challenges of concept formation. The toilet offers a model of how to engage citizens. We start all projects with a survey in each village, asking each home what they want for their homes and their communities. Almost all answered toilets. Then we had a discussion where we showed everyone different toilet models and almost everyone always chose the evapotranspiration model. So we used that and adjusted it. We started by listening. We never lecture the people we work with. We are almost never telling people what to do. We use art, street theater, and graffiti to encourage toilet use thanks to collaborations with Ayusha, Kanabadosh, and Basic Shit, respectively. This is how we approached what CLTS calls triggering. We asked those not using the toilet why they don't use the toilet. Monitoring toilet usage and performance is an important part of this work and improving this model. We followed up with the toilet users, conducting two usage and feedback surveys over a year. The toilets have been fully functional for more than two years, and more than 80% are in use in Jagatpur, and more than 60% are in use in Amati. I know it's not 100, and 100 is so attractive. Another lesson I learned is the solution to open defecation is a long-term process with many not, sing not singular causal factors. Secondly, identifying the tank model and building it was a series of collaborations. Zwao Morim introduced and guided the evapotranspiration model. Max Rome of New Ecological also gave invaluable inputs. Some homes even improved on the models themselves. When we made new toilets, we included their changes in our model. In this way, the end user also collaborated in the design. In the toilets we made this year, we changed, thanks to Professor Nema at IIT Delhi, a slurry lining in addition to the plastic lining to meet the health challenges of waste leaching into the soil. As recommended by MOFA, an eco-friendlier brick, fly ash brick, hopefully better doors, cement floors, pipe covers, and new roofs both uh, reinforced cement and Alora and John Hardy inspired bamboo. Together with local government authorities, we recently dug up one of the toilet tanks that has been regularly used by a small family for over two years. The technology was working. There were no blockages, the tank was less than half full, and there were visible signs of composting of the process. We are working on certifying this model. Lastly, how do we classify the toilet? It is a concept belonging to sanitation, health, but without un understanding its role in education in other areas, this variable is incomplete. 
For example, schools are sites for learning about hygiene and potential points for healthcare delivery. Schools have toilets and reinforce our personal habits. Defining concepts, really understanding them and their many relationships, gives us new understandings of how inputs and systems work. In the last few years, in six villages, I was part of building 143 evapotranspiration toilets, one of our area's first permeable roads, solar powering homes, and more. In the long term, I hope to work on governmental and community platforms for meaningful collaboration in the areas of this work. In the meantime, I learn about them firsthand to see what it means to deliver quality social goods in a rural space. Before this project, I had never really shared anything personal in public. I thought to close by sharing a little more today. For me, 2016 was filled with personal loss. In four months, I met loss three times with the death of my father and two close friends. In May, I was in a scooter accident, and for the first six hours, I worried for the driver's life, a close friend. Two of my mother's three brothers had died in car accidents, and they're one of my biggest fears. In trying to make sense of last year, maybe it was about facing my fear. Confession, I'm a simultaneous bilingual. My first languages were Spanish and English, and I was slow to speak. To this day, expressing myself verbally is a challenge, and talking with you is facing a different fear of mine. I have never spoken in public about this experience before. No blog, no talk, no website, no NGO. I'm doing this because this is part of the work. Let's take risks and face our fears together. To not feel fear failure, to know what you don't know, listen, seek support and service. These are ingredients for sustainable change in our communities. Any one of you who wants to do something, do it. Start small. People will join you, and we all already have by the millions. With love, compassion, and service, we will build something so big and beautiful together. Thank you for your time.